Good morning and a warm welcome to the Describing Chinese Rare Books and Cultural Heritage Collections webinar presented by the Wikidata Chinese Cultural Heritage Group in partnership with Colossus in celebration of the 50th anniversary of the Chinese American Library Association. My name is Greta Hong, the Cataloging and Metadata Strategies Librarian at San Diego State University. I am the coordinator of today's webinar and I'm thrilled to be part of this event. Today marks the first event of the, our speaker series, and we're honored to have Kala President Ray join us for a few words. Ray, please go ahead. Thank you, Greta. Hi, everyone. It's good to see you all here. Really appreciate the Kala Sis, as well as the other groups that's been involved for organizing this webinar series. Uh, my name is Ray Pan. I am the Kala President 2022-2023. And I'm delighted to share a few brief remarks about Kala. For those who are not familiar, this is a way for you to understand more about our organization. Since, since 1973, Kala is a volunteer-led library association, a membership association, a 501c3, with over 500 members globally in North America, People's Republic of China, Singapore, and elsewhere. We have a strategic plan, which is to provide professional development opportunities through training and mentoring. And our mission is to support the professional development and research scholarships of Kala members, advocating Chinese American librarians in professional organizations and enhance the leadership development of Chinese American librarians through training, mentoring, networking, and collaboration with colleagues in the United States and abroad. Kala's work inspires Chinese American librarians to meet their professional goals and to make valuable contributions to the global library community. As Greta mentioned, this year we celebrate our 50th anniversary in 2023, and I invite you all to join us virtually for a celebration. You can find out more through uh, our website, kala-web.org, and this webinar series is part of this effort in celebrating Kala's 50th anniversary. And we welcome you all to join Kala as members, as allies, and advocates focusing on equity, diversity, and inclusion in the profession. Thank you. Thank you, Ray, for your thoughtful remarks. We appreciate Kala's support and your leadership. Before we get started, let's get to know the groups that planned and supported today's webinar. I'm a member of Wikidata Chinese Culture Heritage Group. Our Wikidata group proposed and planned this event. We were formed in October 2020 with Chinese American librarians, librarians from several institutions. Our group has done multiple projects and presented our findings about characteristics of Wikidata related to Chinese cultural heritage, data models for Chinese women points and historical places, and also did um, different data visualization too. You can find more information about our group's work on our Wikidata page. I'll drop the link in the chat um, in a while. Sai will give now. Sai will now give a brief introduction of Colossus, which is Colossus Digital Repository. Sai, please take it over. Hi, thank you, uh, Great and Ray, and uh, hi everyone. Uh, I'm the co-chair, one of the co-chairs of Colossus, Kala Academic Resource and Repository System. Colossus, uh, as Great has said, is Kala's institutional repository. It collects and archives Kala's programs, documents, and history, uh, Kala members' scholarly and professional achievements, as well as Chinese studies and Chinese cultural heritage materials. So it started in 2013, and by February 22nd, that yesterday, it has about 800 uh, works in the system. It has 1,626,296 hits since the spring of 2020. Uh, so in celebration of the Kala's 50th anniversary, Kalasis has worked with the Kala 50th Celebration Task Force to create the collection grants. Minting Women's Poetry Collection uh, by the Wikidata Chinese Culture and Heritage Group is the one that has received recognition. All awarded collections will be uh, archived and presented in Kalasis. We also hope more Kala members and the librarians in LIS or related fields can contribute to Colossus. Our goal is to make it open and inclusive. Today, we're very happy to host this webinar on describing Chinese rare books and the cultural heritage collections. We'd like to thank our uh, special uh, our speaker, Jackie Sher, and everyone. 
uh, who's attending this webinar. Thank you. Thank you, Sai. We are thrilled to have Jackie Shea, the Descriptive Data Management Librarian at Simulsonia Libraries and Archives, as our guest speaker today. Jackie worked in several academic libraries, such as Georgia State University Law Library, University of Virginia Library, University of Michigan Library, and Georgia Washington, uh, George Washington University Libraries. Over the years, Jackie has been involved in many metadata projects related to the web, including TEI, OCLC's InterCAT, and co-cooperative online resource catalog projects, ALCTS Committee on Cataloging, Descriptive, and Access, and also some PCC task groups, including your ICMARC, um, BIPFRAME mapping of BIPCOL and BIPFRAME, metadata for application profiles, and most recently, mark simplification for BibFrame conversion and enhancing metadata and practices in MARC bibliographic records. We encourage you to actively participate in the discussion and ask questions. You can use the chat function to post your questions, and we will try to address as many as possible during the Q&A session after Jackie's talk. Jackie, please take it over. Um, in the interest of uh, saving my bandwidth, I am going to, at this time, uh, stop the video. And I wanted to thank you for participating in this uh, webinar. And so here we go. Good afternoon from Washington, D.C., uh, U.S. Eastern Time Zone. And I would like to take the opportunity to thank the Wikidata Chinese Cultural Heritage Group of the Chinese American Librarians Association for this wonderful opportunity to share with you the Chinese Ancestors Portrait Project that is one of our uh, five Wikidata projects um, that we participated in the PCC Wikidata pilot. This collection came from the National Museum of Asian Art. What I will be sharing um, that we will talk about is how the project got started. And as a participant for the Wikidata pilot uh, from the PCC Wikidata project. And specifically, we will look at the uh, the detailed information that we had to wrestle through our participation period, um, that is September 2020 to August 2021, highlighting the Chinese ancestor portraits. We, um, I would also touch on the strengths and weaknesses of Wikidata as we experienced and how our struggles, uh, in fact, they're probably not unique. Um, I recall that the members of this group, Wikidata Chinese Cultural Heritage Group, presented their findings in the LD4 2021 conference, sounded familiar to what we have been experiencing as we uh, went through our struggles. So some of the questions remain unresolved. However, I'm confident that this community of color librarians is this the ideal group to lead and help shape and reach the Chinese materials described in Wikidata? And I think one of the things to do is to establish policies and best practices for describing historical persons and cultural artifacts. So before we delve into deeply, I wanted to reference some of the terms that you will hear throughout the next 30 uh, half hour. So first thing first, the term wiki is a Hawaiian term meaning quick and fast. This term alludes to a collaborative editing platform on a browser. When wiki, the term is mentioned, many automatically associated with Wikipedia, where anyone could say anything about anything in textual description. A Wikipedia article can be edited and created by anyone, whether the person is a registered user or not. 
Meet DL Wiki, on the other hand, is a software that powers a variety of wiki projects like Wikipedia, Wikidata. It is hosted by the Wikimedia Foundation. Wikidata is a repository of structured data for over 100 million items. It is now considered the central database of many authoritative identifiers. Wikidata serves other Wikimedia projects like Wikipedia, Wikimedia Commons, Wikisource, and many others. Wikimedia Commons is a media repository. Many users upload freely, freely available and reusable media files, such as images, audio, and video. Similar to its sister projects, the collection includes media files in many languages and supports other Wikimedia projects. You know, the data form that is being deployed in Wikiform is triple. A triple statement consists of three components asserting some fact. Reference, often referenced as an RDF statement. A triple is an assertion. It is a W3C structural data standard for computers and their networks to easily read and manipulate in order to deliver data representation over the web. There is clarity and no nuances of what is being said in, a triple, in triple statements. So in Wikidata, the term claim often replaces the term statement. So you will hear sometimes it's being referred to a Wikis, Wikidata claim instead of a Wikidata statement. Modeling data is an important exercise in the realm of linked data ecosystem. Data-based designers often seek to understand where people take the data and what they want to do with the data. Data modeling offers us opportunities asking questions like, which part or where, where of the data should go and how should be represented in a landscape such as Wikidata? How will we make these, this is that statement? Modeling of data can be tricky, especially when we deal with the heterogeneous data sets, like in our environment, in the Smithsonian environment. Our data competencies evidently was improved over a series of user stories and pers persona exercises throughout the preparation for us to embark on the PCC Wikidata pilot. The interactions engage our team in interesting discoveries concerning ethics, political climates, operational, operational nuances, uh, workload, as we begin to construct Wikidata statement. There are different forms that Wiki uh, RDF data can be um, output. They could be represented in the form simply by append, appending a file format such as JSON or TTL to an RDF IRI. The selected item will then display triples in the syntax chosen, in the syntax of the chosen file format on a browser of your choice. Data visualization is something new to many of us. It is usually done by query servers. Search result can be represented in tables, bubble charts, maps, or timelines if um, the information is available. The Smithsonian, funded in 1846, has 21 museums, gardens, and zoo, as well as research centers ranging from specialized libraries and archives and as well physical observatories, ecological and biological laboratories to a museum conservation institute. Units of the Smithsonian are mostly based in Washington, DC, Maryland, and Virginia, but there are also research centers in Cambridge, Massachusetts, Fort Pierce, Florida, Belize, and the Republic of Panama. 
The Smithsonian's activities include not only museum exhibits, but also programs like Global Genome Initiative, the Global Volcanism Program, the Recovery of the Recovering Voices Program to document and sustain the world's endangered languages and knowledge. As you might imagine, it is extreme challenges to develop a knowledge base that can contain such disparate kinds of sources of data. And the need for such a resource has never been so much greater in order to show to the public and the federal government, which largely funds the Smithsonian, the value of our resource, our services that the institution can provide. The Smithsonian's world of data covers many different kinds of entities, living up to and beyond the cliche of being called the nation's attic and honoring the wishes of our fund founder, James Smithson, to be an organization working for the increase and diffusion of knowledge. Our Wikidata journey began with a simple desire. How might, how might our existing name authority work be extended to serve colleagues and collections within and beyond the Smithsonian Institution? Names have been collected and described over time in disparate databases across the institution for artifacts, specimens, objects, for names for researchers, organizations. They are diverse in nature. However, the one commonality they all share was they all are in desperate need of data reconciliation. A preferred label for the same name varies from institution, from units to unit within the institution, not to mention the non-romanized form, which also complicated our deliberation process. Library's name authority data, like many of yours, is coded in mock data format and usually hide behind the library cataloging system. In our case, our library catalog system is called Horizon. It is a system that vendor has long ceased development features and improvement. The process to share and reuse this data is laborious. And the, con the, the data that has been created and maintained by our museums are stored in TMS, the museum the museum system. And if there are archival units, they are in the archive, archive space. Even though the Smithsonian has a discovery system for collection metadata, but at the moment, there's no central hosting system for agent names, which makes connecting names with collections across units so much harder. We have tried to develop linked data models to suit a variety of topics relevant to the Smithsonian's and other GLAM organizations. Starting with the Name Reconciler project in May 2019, different needs soon emerge for names. The PCC Wikidata pilot, that there was a call for Wikidata participation came in the summer of 2020. The Smithsonian Libraries and Archives team began the particip to participate in September 2020. Though our work had actually taken place much earlier, beginning in March 2020, when most of the staff from the Smithsonian pivoted primarily to working from home due to, due to the pandemic. Before then, the Smithsonian had taken some small steps over the years towards embracing a potential of linked data, including work, including the work by and with Wikimedians in residence, the open access initiative launched back in February 2020, and the implementation of a linked data macro process for our library catalog records. 
The shutdown created both the need and the opportunities to focus on virtual projects and our work from home setups enable us to collaborate closely on what has been had formerly been a sort of back burner initiatives. It helped us to rethink how the Smithsonian's amazing variety of collections and research could be more made, could be made more coherent and discoverable through linked data for the benefit of the Smithsonian staff, as well as the wider global audience interested in our claimed resources. Our efforts were so boosted, were also boosted with help and advice from the Wikibase development team at the Wikimedia Deutschland and other Wikimedians, as well as numerous other persons and organizations involved in and interested in structured data and linked data projects. Like I said earlier, our participation in the Wiki, PCC Wikidata pilot um, early on has begun to help us in, in thinking through how, this, how our data presented in Wikidata would be a foundation for us to begin the practices of creating and enriching data in a linked data manner. We began to think in terms of working with identifier, not so much as an authority data. We began to work and learn how to construct Sparkle queries in order to highlight the efforts that have been put in in Wikidata. In the next half hours, I will walk you through all the projects, all the things that we need to work on. And who are we? For this project, the Chinese Ancestor Portrait Project, several library colleagues from the Museum of Asian Art had greatly contributed to the formation, to the research of this project. Catherine Phillips, Mike Smith, Yu She, Kiela Riches, including some summer interns, have formed the core of this Chinese Ancestor Project. In this collection, there were 88 portraits identified with 94 sitters. After careful research, 51 of the 94 sitters made its way to Wikidata because they met the Wikidata notability and exclusion policies. So what did we do? You know, before our the project, most of our team hadn't really needed to think about what data modeling meant. To work in a wiki a linked data environment, such as wiki platform, it is imperative that we understood data modeling. So how did we begin? We began by dissecting our needs, going through user stories. We examine the user stories in order to define, to identify and build what we would need as we learn the system, Wikidata ecosystem. We plow through properties, selected the core sets to describe sitters and paintings. We try to understand circumstances that have been put in place by constraints of a certain property. How they, how they make sense or didn't make sense for the property that had been chosen to, to apply. We try very hard to grasp the rationale behind the Wikidata structure in relation to the work that we needed to do. Policies and best practices in, for Wikidata item editing were rather hard to come by. Data visualization provided us a, a new way to understand how our effort would make sense or not. Obstacles were encountered, but they did not discourage us at all. Instead, energize us to help us thinking through and to begin to dream big how my our work can serve uh, 
constituents, the collections, and the data. So let's dig in to look at what we have to go through. First up, describing a person. Person data for our portraits for the sitters are usually already being researched and put in place by curators. We reuse the data to reconcile and then identify whether a Wikidata item exists for this person. The person could be identified based on and dis disambiguate based on the family that they represented. It is really a common trait for these sitters in our collection um, because we encounter them, they are usually from provenance social status of their time. They're either from a royal house or a prominent clan of a well-known region. And some of them um, were also identified by their bestowed title. The dates associated with them could be hard to come by. It is also uh, problematic to understand whether the date, communicate the date, original date as recorded or the Gregorian date that has been converted. We have, throughout this process, we have selected core properties to describe sitters. And then they were then uh, enhanced by ex extended list of properties that the team deemed important to include. For instance, in an effort to narrow the time span of a person associating with a dynasty in addition to the Gregorian date, the following properties were also considered. Country of citizenship, the time period, or the period that is valid associated with this particular item. In addition, ethnicity for the person is also important descriptive endeavor because even though most of the sitters from our collection are from Qing court, by definition, they could be of the ethnicity of the Manchu race. However, it is not always the case. Um, and also in order to facilitate pulling all the, this, um, the, ident the work that we have put in, we also institute a property call on focus list of Wikimedia projects, P5008, to be able to collocate all of the items that can originate from this particular project. Now that we know the person that we want to describe, when we come into describing this name, there are several different approaches. Option of the option to the option to choose which form to enter is a tricky exercise. By the way, what you see on the screen here due to the subject matter is the primary source. And most of the time, the, the Chinese script will be written in traditional scripts. A historical person during this period that is identified for our collection usually have more than one names. And as you can see, there are so many different variants of names that could be attached to this person. And when, as we done our research, you could, it, it's not uncommon to see the person's name, last name, and I've used the term last name, whereas in the Chinese written form, you will have the separation of xin versus shi. And in this case, for a person that have a jiang xin, but have a lu shi. But in the English, in the English world, in the Western society, the xin shi constitute surname, family name. 
So in in our in our collection, the sitters primarily coming from Qing court, adding to another layer of complexity is certain time the name would also be a Manchu form. So are we to use the Manchu form or the Han equivalent of the form? And then some of the sitters, they are women. And in this case, it is very unique to, to some group that women are identified by the, the surname of either their maiden name of association made to the spouse. And so in this case, for us, in order to understand how we could choose and make use of the name, we also have a series of questions that we need to ask and also see if there's answers that can be provided to these questions. So for example, how about the claim, especially in the environment that we are in for the Manchu society, is this the importance of the claim versus the name that they have been known by? Well, with the, the name added to the aliases without the property, because some of the names may not have property established for them, but then they add difficulty when we conduct Sparkle queries in order to make use of the inference that is available in this system. So something for us to really consider and to ponder over. So once we know the names, we are still having some difficulty reconciling the fact that what would be the appropriate form to be entered as the default label. Being a multilingual system, Wikidata editors enter labels in as many languages as possible. And it is fairly common to come across items missing English label, which is the default form for, a, for an item best known in Wikidata. And some editors enter the label of a translation or a transliteration for an original item that is not English. Case in point, as you see here on the screen, Channel Emperor is well known. Yang Hong, should it be entered as Yang Hong or Hong Yang? And the work, I think, Jero. Um, I think general Jia Zhu Shi, is it communicable to users that perhaps conducted the search and not being able to make sense of this transliteration, which is essentially means the history of the I think general claim, or could also be translated as the family history of the I think general. In fact, I have in been engaged in several discussions via the talk of items for labels that were entered in the English portion of the label area was not considered English by some editors. And these editors strongly objected to the English, well, the Roman form of the sound like translation of the original text that is not English in the English label area. So here, an appeal to you all, what say you, experts, librarians who are Chinese, who have dealt with Chinese heritage materials throughout all your profession, or your professional life, what would do you see the policies and best practices that could be put in place to guide the Wikidata community.
the dates that come across in our collection are very, very common that um, it's really hard to decipher. And for many of us, it is common that in Asian culture, historically recording of dates follow the sexagenary cycle, a cycle of 60 terms that is of, often re referred to as the heavenly stems and earthly branches like Tian Gan Di Zhi or simply say Gan Zhi. This is a lunisolar calendar practice. And what we have found in that this is primary uh, Chinese primary source for days are usually recorded in Ganji system. This is not the same as the Onishan era. Usually it was, it's essentially Gregorian practice. And we know that in Imperial China, monarchs' personal names are to be forbidden for, for mentioning or recorded in any written form. And what has been recorded in the chronicles usually is an emperor's chosen regnal reg names or era names. And this tradition, in fact, still persists to current days, Japan and Taiwan, um, not so much in Singapore or um, PRC. So it is a strenuous exercise to convert, and as you see on the screen, the Eternal Emperor's 32nd year, fourth month, 19th day, to 1767, May 16, for example. As we mentioned that the collections we are working, we worked on was for the sitters and the and the paintings. So after completing the Wikidata descriptions, we then moved on to the Wikimedia Commons. And we had discovered that the data entered in Wikidata were not easy transferable to Wikimedia Commons, even though there were templates made available such as our work and our photo, uh, to facilitate data transfer from Wikidata to Wikimedia Commons, there's no tools currently in place to directly point from Wikidata to Wikimedia Commons. And this is something that we are com having conversation with both groups to figure out a best way to connect one service with the other service, simply because we are, these both services are already using Media Wiki software. So when selecting a language to add in Wikidata, when, when we enter the code ZH, it is usually default to Chinese language Mandarin tone and is, is referenced as the official language like Guanghua. When you look at the script itself, it is Zhongwen. And the Zhongwen, you know, if we were to use um, in this particular image, you see on the screen, the second line inscription for the picture. This picture originated, this is a photograph of Channel Emperor inserted in a Dutch translation of jo George Lenard Staunton's book called An Authentic Account of an Embassy from the King of Great Britain. It was published in 1797, uh, where two edicts from Channel Emperor rejecting trade pleas from King George III government. So if you look at this and judging from the date of the publication, if you were to code the inscription, the second on the screen, how may you code this? particular uh, language uh, inscription. If you were to choose ZH, Wikidata immediately shows the label form in Chinese script called Zhongwen. Now it is indeed Zhongwen right here. You probably not think that is Zhongwen. 
But if you were to say English, it is actually English, that is also problematic. It is a very, very interesting problem that we have come across. Um, so currently, if you wanted to enter this, I'll be interested in knowing how you would recall this. As we know, the romanization of Chinese rendering sound follow very various different iterations. The pinging system was not in place until the 50s, 1950s. Wejiao system was put in place in 1890s. And in, before that, what is the system? If it, there is one that we should advocate, what would that be? There is also a uh, issue that we have come across when uh, different items apply the same language code using different scripts. And how big a problem is this? I'm not sure. But um, should there be a consistency? Should there be a policy and best practices? So going into the, the reason behind our thinking that wiki platform perhaps would be an idea of open source that would help us realizing the building of a web of knowledge for artists and their artworks and much more. MediaWiki, as we shared earlier, is the software that designed for collaborative editing and knowledge sharing. It is scalable, it's open, and it's free. There are many services that have been made available by this software. The Wikimedia Foundation had ushered over 15 projects based on this software. As you see on the screen, and the most commonly known are the Wikipedia, Wikidata, and, and um, Wikimedia Commons. This quote coming, uh, so the, the statements from Hilary Thompson really share our view why we think Wikidata could potentially help us exposing our collection connecting to the web. The Wikimedia's movement strategy matches the Smithsonian's fundamental philosophy providing educational services and outreach programs for all ages, from the very young, the elementary school kids, to the most talented and knowledgeable scientists um, like postdocs. They possess expert knowledge on a given discipline or interdisciplinary pursuits for many kinds. Wikidata offers a flexible data model, enables a broader staff participation in the management of structured data for name, identities, and the descriptive claims are often constructed through properties and qualifi qualifiers with constraints that would help us narrow down the, the um, description that we wanted to focus on. So for our collection and user base, we have plenty of opportunity to think big using this. And this is one of the things that would help us to really explore all our collection in a different phase. In this case, even within the wiki infrastructures, we are able to connect Wikidata to Wikisource. We are able to provide the source data and construct articles in Wikipedia and make use of the images that reside in the system. So the next few slides will show how various different tools make use of same structural data. And you see here on the screen, different display mechanisms offered by different services were able to quickly pull content out of Wikidata and showcase whatever they deem important for their user base. We also have the ability to connect our library catalog to wiki, uh, wiki sources, such as Wikipedia and MediaWiki Commons. And this is a view from our um, 
different linked data catalog um, offered by Share VDE. Andrew Lee, the Wikimedia investors at the Smithsonian created two tools that will highlight artists and artwork. This one for artists, simply enter the, the item number for the artist, you will be able to generate graph for the, the art, artist that you have in mind. And um, this is the art depiction explorer. Once you log in using your user ID uh, from Wikidata, you will be able to search what the theme about this painting. And in this case, this is a breath of spring um, that it was in the Channel Emperor's uh, private collection and now is in the Smithsonian. Um, you will see that with the inscription, and when we display the, the data in our own collection search, we will be able to then connect back to Wikidata via a browser add-on called Entity Explorer. And in this particular case, Entity Explorer allows users an option to display item information in the language of his or her choice. And in this example, I have chosen the traditional Chinese scripts that it quickly pour in information found in Wikidata and display what it, what it is inside our Smithsonian collection, um, collection site. A poem written on the painting um, we created an item to test how this poem can connect the painting as well as the digital form of the poem that is currently made available in Wikisource. And here is a view of the same Wikidata item in Chinese to connect to the Wikisource of the same poem. As I said, mentioned earlier, visualization is one thing that is really excites us. And we have conducted several uh, Sparkle queries to highlight the collection. Here is one that pull in all the sitters. Um, if you use this um, short hand for the Sparkle query, you will be able to generate live Sparkle query and pour back all the images associated with the collection. We use the timeline to collocate what all these um, sitters, when they were born or on the dates that are available with their birth and the same data that could be generated using different scripts in a separate site that is not Wikidata. And this site is called Hysropedia. If you want to test out um, Channel Emperor, as we know, is a very prolific and illustrious monarch. He um, is, was a very arrogant person and had much many reasons to be so. And you can see throughout his lifespan, his military achievements, his literary contributions to the humanities, it's very exciting to be able to see a one single item and with all its associated um, items with this person. Channel Emperor, this is another view for him that just focusing on him as a poet, painter, and calligrapher. What else are we to expect from Wikidata? There are effort going in if you are working with images. Uh, paintings. Triple IF uh, providing an image cropper to be able to zoom in part, part of the images within a bigger picture. Is many of you would know that the Chinese paintings are humongous and there are certain area will be worth uh, highlighting and you will be able to zoom in with additional information if it's available. And Triple IF image cropper allows 
user editor to provide that sort of ability within the image itself in Wikidata. So I invite you to check it out. The other thing is that if you are working with works, collections, Inventor is another great external source that makes use of Wikidata that connects the, the authors, the creator of a literary work with its, with its um, collections. So for many of us, we have still um, we are still waiting for some resolutions, and we were very delighted to find out that um, Wikimedia Deutschland has launched a survey which ends tomorrow. Uh, I would encourage you to take a few minutes uh, looking through the proposals. And there were about uh, 14 proposals concerning Wikidata. Um, overall, there are over 200 proposals for all the Wiki projects. So take some time looking through it and um, I encourage you to voice your opinions via this wish list survey. This is some of the resources that uh, were handy for us when we try to reconcile the different names that for us to determine what would be the best move, uh, best decision forward. Unfortunately, uh, I think the Hong Kong Chinese authority name is the only system that would take both traditional and simplified scripts. The other systems will only take the scripts that is native to its own system. Like the Shanghai will only take um, the simplified scripts, the uh, name authority from Taiwan databases will all take the traditional scripts. Um, and so if you have any questions, please let me know. And um, thank you so very much. This shooting URL, Billy, you can copy and paste. And if you have your mobile phone available, you could scan the spot QR code and then you'll be able to launch your browser on the phone to get to the presentation stack. Thank you all very much. Thank you, Jackie, for sharing your um, projects and the challenges your group had. Um, we have one question in the Q&A um, part. Is it possible to record date in Wikidata as a text string, such as Chun, in Chinese characters? No. <laughs> That's a short answer. I am being able to. So if we are able to, please let me know. Let's share collected knowledge on this. We have some comments in the chat there, like share there. Thank you for the great work. Thank you for the wonderful presentations. Um. If you have questions, we can still we can still uh, answer. Have time to answer a couple questions. I actually would like for the. Um, because I am not familiar with some of the materials that you all have started and interested in working on. Um, is any of the things that I was able to, you know, uh, not just me, this is, we have our colleagues from the Museum of Asian Art present in the, in the audience. Um, so if you, I, I will be personally interested in knowing you know, some of the issues that we come across, is it unique to us or is it something that it's, you also have experience of? I can speak to, um, for our uh, Wikidata groups projects, we also have some challenges um, when we want to describe 
um, some Chinese women points names. They have, or Sai, you can speak, a Sai and Cindy can also um, chime in. So we also have challenges um, in describing some Ya Hao or um, Bi Mings. And um, when you mentioned that some Chinese women name, like they'd like to add Shu after their family name. Hmm. We also have difficulties uh, when we wanted to um, represent them in the wiki data. We have one question in the chat. Which source would you choose for a personal name if sources have different headings? For example, HKCAN has PIN, but LCNNF has modified WG. Oh, hmm. Well, you know, that to me, that's where the question I have for you all is that this community, given the fact that you are native speakers, you have background, you have dealt with this Chinese materials professionally, um, what would be the, the possible policy that you could gather in order for the community beyond the Chinese community to abide to so that we could in a way logically anticipate when I'm searching for this, this is what I could expect. And so, you know, the resources I alluded to, um, I use us to confirm whether my, our, our team's research were essentially correct. Um, because sometimes the same pinyin name result in the same, the, 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 the person that could be in the Song Dynasty as well as the Ming Dynasty. So without looking at the Chinese script, you really have no way of determining, should I be entering this in the Song Dynasty? Or it's sometimes even, even the Song Dynasty, there is Southern Song and Northern Song period. Um, and, and so I am looking to you guys to in a way help shape the policy and best practices so that we could push out to the Wikidata community overall. Am I asking too much? <laughs> yeah, I agree. Um, actually, I think uh, most of those issues are common to uh, describe uh, Chinese heritage materials, like the, uh, the names, like the historical places, like the time, like, uh, you know, dynasty and the period, um, most of these issues, like, because they are, some of them are unique to Chinese material. So there's no uh, established uh, like uh, standard practice. So we we had like similar issues in describing the Chinese, uh, Chinese women poets, like our group. And <laughs> yeah, I, we're still trying to figure out like for the historical place, are we going to like use uh like create like one uh, entry for each like uh each place which has uh which has changed in the administrative um like uh you know um a change in like administration or are we going to like if the name changes um like are we going to create a new entry for that uh place? Um you know we have many uh like similar kind of questions. Like yeah, the I think the question is there. I think we all seem to ask the same questions, but it would be nice for a you know, group, an authoritative group to come along and say, given these considerations, we are recommending this and let's all try to follow this. And um, so I think that's what I was looking to. But at any rate, there are some qu uh, questions from the chat. I will try to answer. Um, I think uh, the first question is, have we heard any feedback from scholars about our project? Um, is it possible for some of the participants to unmute? Because I think this will be helpful for our colleagues from the museums to answer this question because we have interchange with curators as well. So 
um, Catherine or Shu? Catherine, I think you can. Catherine, can you unmute yourself? I think I just enabled. Um, yes, I can unmute myself, but uh, my husband was just bringing a parking <laughs> ticket to my attention, so I missed the question. <laughs> Could you repeat the question, Jackie? The question was, have we heard any feedback from scholars about the Chinese Ancestor Portrait Project? I would say that um, we have gotten only general feedback. They're kind of interested in what they're do what we're doing. But um, we haven't gotten specific feedback other than we had some discussions about the country, whether it was China or Qing Dynasty, um, minor things like that. But for the most part, they're kind of waiting for us to take the lead and sort it out is my sense that they're interested, that they kind of understand what we're doing, but we haven't gotten an enormous amount of specific feedback about how we would describe these individuals. What we did, uh, Jackie and Shu and Mike and I were talking about this is we decided to use their vocabulary in our museum system in terms of describing either the person or perhaps the things in the image. Um, if they named a flower, for example, we use their flower name. If they just called it a flower, we called it a flower because there's lots of descriptive options too. So in mm -hmm. that, we are getting feedback from them through the museum system, but that's about it. And to the question uh, with regards to Manchu script or Mongolian script or Tibetan script, um, I believe Manchu script is possible because we have entered Manchu scripts for our sitter, um, but I am not sure about Mongolian or Tibetan. Um, I could check into this. If you want me to respond, please send me a note. So I have your email address that I could follow up with you. Um, and there is also a question with regards to the resources which was best to use, such as the Hong Kong Chinese name, uh, Chinese authority name database or others. Um, it all depends the the name entity that you are working with. Um, uh, is the name from from a more ancient period that um, some of the resources, when you go to those resources, like the Shanghai Public Libraries, the uh, uh, Academia Sinica, they would tell you what the name's been covered. And so if the name that you are interested in follows with fall into the range, then you know, um, you may be able to find information in those databases. I have discovered uh, painfully that if I were to use tra tra uh, traditional script in Shanghai, Shanghai system, link data system, I found zero hit. Then for the longest time, it did not occur to me that it didn't, it didn't work with traditional script. <laughs> yeah, I have to learn how to translate the tra traditional script into uh, simplify script in order to have successful outcome. Now, in order to facilitate, uh, the one question uh, about our effort um, in the in the wiki data system gets overwritten by others, and that was painfully true. Um, and that was one of the th uh, things that I referred to earlier. Um, that we had discussions about the form. They overwritten what we have provided in the label. And they uh, it was said that it's English label. You are doing transliteration for the English label, which is wrong. And <laughs> so we had all this huge discussion and um, I was tired of back and forth. So I really seriously like guidance because many of our work gets overwritten. Um, and yes, indeed, the term you you put into aliases are searchable um, and they, they, they are pulled up. And when we first started, 
if the aliases are not in the English portion, um, you don't get to see it. But now I believe if the aliases is in other languages section, it will pull. Uh, um, in the result set as put it in parentheses to help identify the item. So that is currently true, available. Okay. You know, I just noticed the time we are grossly over time. I am so sorry. Thank you, Jackie. Thank you so much for your time. And thank you everyone for your participating. Um, finally, I'd like to remind you that this was the first webinar in our speaker series. We will have a second webinar coming up in the spring, which will focus on a different aspect of Chinese cultural heritage collections and um, rare materials cataloging. We'll be sharing more information about this about the upcoming event soon. So keep an eye um, out for updates. Um, thank you, Jackie, and thank you all for joining us today. Slides and recording will be available on Colossus soon. We hope you found this webinar informative and valuable. Have a great day, and we'll see you in the next webinar.